In this video, we will show you how to replace your vehicle's ignition coils on this Ford F-150 with a 3.5 liter engine. You'll have six of these. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. A quick note, three of your ignition coils will be out in the open along the driver's side valve cover, but the other three on the passenger side valve cover are under your intake. This side's the harder side to get to, so this will be the side we do. Over on the driver's side of the engine compartment, we're going to start dislodging the upper air filter housing from the lower housing, including the intake, making its way all the way down to the throttle body. To separate this, you're going to find that you have two locking tabs. Go ahead and take hold of the locking tab and gently pull it away from the air filter box. We'll repeat the process for the other one. We've got one right there. At this point, we can continue on to taking hold of this. We'll lift it up at an angle. Along the back side, there are two locating ears that go into the bottom air filter box. We'll keep pulling this forward, removing the ears from the ports on the lower box there. And now you can remove the air filter. Just a quick inspection of that. Make sure it's not damaged in any way. We'll set that aside. Now we're moving towards the engine on the air inlet. We want to go ahead and remove the coolant overflow hose from this. It should just slide right out of there. Now let's make our way over to the other side. Now in this area, you're going to find that you have an EVAP line. It's a plastic line. It has a small connector on it that we need to disconnect. Now looking at that white connector, you should find that it has a lock and the lock will have two ears that you need to carefully pull out and away while gently pressing it up. Looking at ours, it looks as though it's missing, but if I was to look all the way over at the brake booster, I'll find that there's another one of those connectors with a locking tab so I can show you how it works. Now to disconnect this, if you were looking up along the rectangular portion of the lock, we're going to use an angled pick. You can also try using a flat blade screwdriver if you want. You want to try to get into these small grooves which are close to the locking ears and gently just start twisting and pulling up on this locking tab. You can work it back and forth as needed here. We're trying to separate it from the line. Now as you can see that has separated. You can continue on to fully removing it if you need to. Uh, sometimes it's best that way so you don't have to worry about it falling. That's essentially what the lock should look like except it should be on this connector on the air filter housing. Now, once you have the lock out of there, you can just take hold of the line and slide it out of place. A quick inspection. We'll set that aside. Continuing towards the engine, we have another line here. Now, for this one, you can see part of the locking tab coming across here, but the area that you actually need to take hold of is just underneath here. It's a small tab that protrudes downward at an angle. You want to carefully take hold of that small tab on your index finger. We're going to press that gently towards the engine or straight rearward a little bit, and then you should be able to push it a little bit towards the driver's side, essentially pushing this gray tab out and away from that line leading from the intake. Just try to find that towards the engine. Over, you can see it moving. Now I'm just gonna take hold of that line, slide it off of there. Now it is a little bit difficult to see the tab. It's right under here. So I just push it towards the engine a little bit to unlock it and then push it over. Continuing on, the inlet connects onto the throttle body with a seven millimeter clamp. You can also use a flathead for this. Go ahead and loosen this clamp just enough that you can slide the intake off of the throttle body. Go ahead and remove that from the vehicle. A quick inspection, set it aside. Let's move along the top of the intake. You should find a securing point holding this EVAP line in place. This one looks like it's been dislodged. I'm just gonna try to pop it out of that throttle body. You can use a trim tool. Quick inspection. Now it is common for these clips to break. It really just supports this. We'll follow the line towards the intake now. We can separate the line from the intake right along here. For this clamp, you can either use your fingers or typically just use some pliers. are. Just a quick inspection of both ends here. That looks good. We'll set this aside. Now we're looking at our throttle body. We'll have to disconnect the electrical connector here. For the electrical connector, you have a red locking tab. You just want to carefully use a pocket screwdriver here and gently pull it away. Now moving just in from there, there's another locking tab. This one we're just going to squeeze on the plastic and pull this out of place. Follow that electrical connector down to its mounting point. Let's use a trim tool. Pop that out of there. 
Now we'll move in this area. We have an electrical connector, small locking tab, squeeze it in, disconnect it. You would want to follow that electrical wiring across where it goes over the intake. Should be held in place. This one, the tab's broken, but just go ahead and get right underneath there and pop that up and out of there. We'll set that wiring aside. Now, if you were to move just below that, you're going to find another line leading into this area. Looking at that green portion, that's the lock. We want to try to reach underneath there. There's two locking ears. Squeeze them in towards the center and then push this up and away. Slide that off of there. That's what that looks like. Just squeeze them in. We'll leave that in the unlocked position. Now we'll make our way over here. This is another one of those small tabs that I had showed you before where you want to take hold of it. We're going to pull it towards the line and then pull it down and away. That should unlock this. Pull that off of there. Just a quick inspection. And there's that lock. Let's move all the way to the top rear of the intake now. Let's go ahead and squeeze on this electrical connector, pull it out of place. Now, if you are following the wiring harness down along the back side of the intake, I have my mirror back here. It should actually press into a small port on the intake right down in this area. You just want to go ahead and gently lift it up and out of there using a small trim tool. Ours has already been dislodged and it looks like it's pretty much ready to break off. Uh, so you just want to go ahead and pull that up and out of there. Now I'm making my way towards the driver's side of the intake here. We have a larger wiring harness. That should be held in place with this small clip with a wire tie attachment to it. This one's been broken as well, but go ahead and pry it up and out of yours. Now we're going to start removing the intake from the engine. Make sure there's no miscellaneous debris up along the top. To remove the intake continuing from here, you're going to find that there's seven eight millimeter headed mounting bolts. You can see several of them making their way around the outer portion of the intake. They're going to make their way all the way along to the back. There's six of them. The seventh one is going to be located right up in this area. Let's start removing the outer mounting bolts first. There we are, that one's loose. Make our way back. I'm gonna pause out here, make my way to the far rear. Now let's go ahead and get that last mounting bolt right up along the top. Carefully reach inside the vehicle, take hold of the intake, lift it up and out of position, being extremely careful for any wiring harnesses or any miscellaneous connectors. Now, once you have that off of there, the next thing I always like to do is clean and inspect the mounting point. It's a good idea to give this a quick wipe and a close inspection, confirming that nothing's cracked or worn or damaged in any way. As we're cleaning this, we're making sure nothing falls inside of any of these six ports leading into the engine. That can be catastrophic. Now that it's clean, let's go ahead and protect the area. I'm just going to put this right over the top so nothing can fall inside the engine as we continue on. Now we're going to start removing our ignition coil. What you'll find to disconnect your ignition coil is you should have a red locking tab. We want to carefully pull that red locking tab up and away from the connector portion and the ignition coil and then squeeze on this area right here, dislodging the ignition coil wiring harness. Go ahead and pull that out of place, a quick inspection for corrosion. 
Now let's start removing the ignition coil. To remove the ignition coil, you're going to find that it has an eight millimeter headed mounting bolt. Let's pull that out of there. Take hold of the ignition coil, give it a slight twist, and lift it up and out of position. There it is, friend. Let's clean this area. We'll use some compressed air. All right, let's prepare this ignition coil for our installation. We're going to take some dielectric lubricant and bring it right inside the port here on the very tip, right where the spark plug will sit into. Continuing on from there, let's get this in position along that valve cover. We're going to slide it into the spark plug tube all the way down until it's bottomed out and make sure our mounting bolt port is aligned. Now that we have the ignition coil in place, we're going to start in our mounting bolt. We'll bottom this out. The torque for this is 62 inch pounds plus an additional 50 degrees. Press it in, listen for our click, lock it down. Now that we've completed that one, go ahead and do the same to all others. Now let's have a look at the bottom of the upper air intake. You should find that you have a gasket that goes along the top of your lower intake. Commonly, you want to go ahead and remove this and replace it. At minimum, you want to go ahead and clean it down and make sure it's still soft and pliable. When cleaning it, you want to make sure nothing falls inside of any of the ports and we will not be using any parts cleaner. Gonna go ahead and wipe this down, make sure it's not dry rotted and cracked in any way. If it is, we are definitely going to replace this. It does feel like it's still soft and pliable. Now we'll just double check, make sure the gasket's completely seated all the way around. If it's off by even one little portion, it could cause a vacuum leak. You're going to have a running condition and a check engine light. Now while we're working on this, let's also clean the mounting point on that throttle body. Let's go ahead and give that a quick wipe, thorough inspection. Let's get this over to the vehicle. Now let's remove the protective covering over the center of the engine here. One quick confirmation to make sure nothing's fallen down into this area. This is extremely important. Now it's time to install our upper intake manifold. We'll carefully get this in position, start in all the mounting hardware before snugging any of it. It's in place, let's start in our mounting hardware. Make sure we start it all in by hand. We're not going to snug anything until it's all started. Now that they're all started, we're going to snug these and eventually torque them in a specific sequence. Start back here. Let's get the last one right in the front here. Now that they're snug, we're going to torque these to 89 inch pounds plus an additional 45 degrees in the exact same sequence.
Okay, right there is 89. Get the fourth one. Let's get the last one right here up in the front. Now for good measure, go ahead and go around one more time. Now let's make our way all the way to the back of the intake now. We have the electrical connector for our map sensor. Press that in, listen for a click. Now as we make our way towards the driver's side rear of the intake there, you should find a large wiring harness that's supposed to press directly into the intake. As you know, ours is broken. Typically you just want to go ahead and press that right in, right in this area here. Get our evap line on here, just press it on. Once that's in as far as you can, go ahead and lock it down with your green lock. A light tug, we're trying to remove it without causing any damage, it should not slide off. It's time for the electrical wiring harness for this. Just go ahead and line it up, press it in. Listen for a click, double check it. Now it's time for the electrical connector for our throttle body. This has a mounting point right inside this area here. Just go ahead and press that in. Connect in your electrical connector, press it in, listen for a click, a light tug, lock it down. Now we can get this in position as well. Go ahead and squeeze on that clamp as necessary. Go ahead and give that a tug. Up along the top of the throttle body, this should press right down into this area. As you know, ours is broken. Let's continue on. We've got our breather hose. It's going to go right on here. Let's go ahead and line that up, press it in. Double check, make sure that's secured in place. It's time for the air filter and the air intake system. When we go to install the upper air filter housing, you're going to find it has four small tabs that protrude out. Those will slide into these slots. We'll roll it down and latch it in with the two locks along the front. It's pressed in. Double check, make sure that's secured. Let's make our way all the way over towards that throttle body. Let's get this aligned. You wanna make sure you press it all the way up against the throttle body. It should fit right into position. Let's get this line connected in. Let's go ahead and press that in. Audible click, let's move along. Now I installed a new lock on this because ours was missing. For this, we want to have it in the lock position for installation, so I'm just going to use a small pocket screwdriver, move it so the ears are in the proper positioning, press it all the way down. Now it's in the fully locked position, let's go ahead and press this into place. Listen for a click from that, give it a tug, make sure it's secured. Now we're moving towards the front of that air intake hose there, we just want to go ahead and slide this hose into the proper position, just give it a little wiggle, make sure that's secured as well. Okay friend, we finished our installation. The next thing that you need to do is go ahead and start up the vehicle. Let it run for a short while, make sure you have no check engine light, no running condition, and take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.